Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Tonight, a tie vote spelling the possible end of Medicaid expansion in Montana. One of the biggest bills of the 2019 legislature, the $700 million a year program to provide government funded health coverage to about 95,000 low income Montanans is dead. All of this coming to a 25-25 tie vote late this afternoon on the Senate floor after nearly two hours of debate. Now that means the bill is dead unless supporters can convince enough senators to change their minds within the next 24 hours. Supporters of House Bill 658 say they'll try a motion on Friday to reconsider Thursday's action and bring the bill back for another vote. The bill would continue Medicaid expansion past a June 30th expiration date. Supporters say the program has accomplished many positive things in Montana during its first three years, such as helping rural hospitals and the poorest citizens gain health coverage. But some Republicans, including Senate President Scott Sales of Bozeman, said the huge spending in the bill is something that the state and the country cannot sustain. I'm going to tell you what, this runaway spending that this bill promotes isn't good for those future generations. It's good for this generation. And to hell with the people that are gonna pay the bill, which are my kids and my grandkids, and yours too. And this isn't a Republican problem, it's not a Democrat problem, it's our problem. Five Republican senators joined all 20 Democratic senators in support of the bill. Montana lawmakers also today killed a bill to finance construction of a new Montana Historical Society Museum. Now, the bill would have raised the state lodging tax from 3 to 4 percent and direct that extra money toward the museum and to grants for local historical sites across the state. But the State House Taxation Committee deadlocked this morning and then voted to kill it. The State Historical Society has been trying for more than a decade to get the OK and funding for its proposed $48 million museum and heritage center in Helena. Supporters now would need 58 votes in the full House to bring the bill to the floor. The bill had already passed in the Senate. Billings police say they've arrested a suspect after yesterday morning's robbery at a Billings Casino. 36-year-old Brandon Hodges was booked into the Yellowstone County Detention Facility and charged with armed robbery. The incident took place at around 8 a.m. at the Lucky Lills Casino on King Park Drive. Police say Hodges demanded money. Now officers with the Billings Street Crimes Division took Hodges into custody. A fatal train versus pedestrian accident is under investigation tonight in Hardin. The Bighorn County Sheriff's Office was called to the tracks near Mitchell Avenue last night shortly after 5 o'clock. There they discovered a deceased male. Now we're told the victim's relatives had not yet been contacted, so his identity is not being released. On the weather scene, Bob, many people can't make it into or out of Billings today, but it's not because of our weather here. <laughs> well, our weather's very nice, yes. but it's other places in the country. Let me show you what it looked like on the High Plains today. Yeah, we are over there in parts of South Dakota where they had to close Interstate 90 there today because of all the snowing conditions in that area. Uh, so far, 17 million people are are uh, affected by this blizzard that's making its way across the high plains. And look at the wind. Uh, winds are howling at about 50 and 60 miles per hour, which is adding to the misery. Let me show you exactly where all this snow is happening. As you can see there in western Montana, it wraps all the way around this low pressure cell. That's over in Nebraska and South Dakota. And see, so far, 900 flights have been canceled out of that thing. And as you'll see here, the blizzard warnings continue from basically Nebraska all the way up to Minnesota and parts of uh, North Dakota as well. So we really missed out on a very big snowstorm, but our weather is going to be improving over the next couple of days. We'll chat about that in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, the spring snow keeps falling in the mountain ranges across Montana. A warning from experts if you're headed into the backcountry. Forest avalanche experts say the snowpack at lower elevations becomes more unstable as temperatures warm up and the top layer melts. The same applies for higher elevations where new snow and wind in the already frozen layer make conditions dangerous. Now, experts suggest the safest time to get out in the backcountry is early in the morning while it's still cold. You leave the house and you're out and you go out skiing. If the if there's a supportable crust, things are safe. By the afternoon, that crust a lot of times melts, and so as soon as it melts and we're in all this wet snow, that means the avalanche danger is rising, and we need to head on out of there. 
Now, the Gallatin National Forest Avalanche Center puts out advisories every Monday and Friday. Well, the addition of invasive species in Montana waters is illegal and harmful, but that doesn't seem to stop people from committing the crime. A pond near Belgrade is a perfect example. MTN's Chet Lehman takes a look at the problem and the proposed solution. This is the River Rock Pond, and it has fish in it. The problem, someone put smallmouth bass in these waters. They are not native to Montana and could jeopardize waterways around southwest Montana. We don't know. Um, no, absolutely no question it was somebody illegally introducing them mm -hmm. because it's definitely not something that the agency has done. And, uh, you know, again, that's not uncommon. We've got lots of examples of folks moving fish. And that's the fear. Back in the 1970s, Fish, Wildlife and Parks put smallmouth bass in these ponds near Three Forks. In just a few short years, fish from here were found as far away as Highlight Reservoir. They are invasive and could cause great harm to the native trout population, which is important here in southwest Montana. The economic impact that that could have on our local area, the number of businesses that rely upon travelers that are coming through to our area specifically for trout fishing, absolutely zero of those people come here for smallmouth fishing. Um, you know, the number of angling businesses that we have based in, in just Bozeman alone. Um, and I'm sure you could call the governor's office and ask about the economic impact that uh, trout fishing has on the state of Montana for tourism. That kind of invasion by non-native species nearly wiped out Yellowstone cutthroat trout populations, impacting far more than just anglers. Yeah, it's not an aquarium. Right. And, you know, the, the stream ecology extends from the stream bottom you know, to the banks all the way up into the floodplain. And mm -hmm. so in Yellowstone's a great example of that where the decline in Yellowstone cutthroat due to lake trout introduction mm -hmm. affected everything from bald eagles to minks to otters to grizzly bears. Right. And that's the kind of ecosystem disruption that we're, we're really fearful of. The solution, a poison made from a plant. Kill the fish in this pond and then restock it with trout. Mm -hmm. where natives would crush up the roots of the plants and then spread it out in the water and the fish would die from it. Mm -hmm. um, but anytime you bring up some sort of a, a chemical, people get pretty concerned. Mm -hmm. And given this is a public pond, you know, I can see that concern. Mm -hmm. Reality with rotenone is it, it, evap it um, breaks down very rapidly and is gone. Um, and it's probably a lot less harmful than the ro Roundup being sprayed up on the weeds and the grass. So, you know, that's something that people get pretty upset about. Fish, Wildlife and Parks is taking comment on the proposed solution through its website until next Wednesday. In Belgrade, Chet Lehman, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Chet. Well, today the Environmental Protection Agency announced proposed changes to the Superfund cleanup in Butte. Now, the proposal asked to create basins and store contaminated water coming off of Butte Hill to remove waste from Silverbow and Blacktail Creek, test the soil for metal levels, and direct Silverbow Creek away from Slag Canyon. But even with these changes, the EPA remedial project manager says the stormwater levels will not meet the current standard placed in 2006. Um, can we get there? Can we meet those standards? And um, the unfortunate thing is, is we can, we can do everything that's practicable, right? And, and we still won't get there. Now the EPA is currently negotiating a cleanup plan with the state, Butte, Silverbow County, and ARCO BP. A Billings woman who stepped in to serve while others went to war is hoping to get honorary veteran status and be buried in the National Cemetery in Laurel. Last week, Montana Senator Steve Daines co-sponsored a bill to do just that. The Cadet Corps was a group of nurses who filled the labor gap left by nurses called overseas during World War II. Laura Koknevig served the Cadet Nurse Corps from 1943 to 1946 at the Bob Wilson Naval Hospital in San Diego, California. Now, currently, cadet nurses don't get the benefit of being buried in a national cemetery. This bill is looking to change that. I knew I was going to be a nurse before I even went and started to school in the first place. That was always from the time I was born, I think. I made up my mind I was going to be a nurse. Well, it'd be a, a, a blessing to be able to be buried. So I know where I'll be buried anyway. Now, similar bills have been introduced since 1996, most recently in 2017, but all of those bills did not make it out of committee. 
Remember that unclaimed $1,000 a day lottery prize purchased in Great Falls? Well, since word got out this week, a Great Falls grandmother who was actually visiting Billings at the time checked her numbers and won. Wanda Guzman is the first Montana to ever win the Lucky for Life prize. Top prize winners receive $1,000 a day for as long as they are alive. Now, Guzman's prize is worth at least $7.3 million. The new winner says she has no immediate plans, but to pay bills and enjoy life. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, bears are coming out of hibernation and hunters are practicing their aim as opening day is just right around the corner. And in sports, Scott chats with Browning Cowboy Dakota Lewis, hoping for his big PBR break starting tomorrow in Billings. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.